Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Q2 H1 FY24 earnings conference call. Greetings of Diwali and wishing you all a very happy Dhanteras. Thank you for taking out time to attend this call. I appreciate your presence on this call as we discuss the prevailing dynamics in the agrochemical industry. I want to begin by acknowledging our team's concentrated efforts that have contributed to a commendable 27% year-on-year growth in our top line during Q2. This achievement becomes a very important, most significant when viewed in light with the challenging agrochemical landscape we find ourselves in. Despite this positive growth, it is crucial to address the persistent pressure on our operating margins. Several factors, including heightened competition from China, elevated inventory across the manufacturers and traders' channels, and some somewhat bleak export demand outlook, continue to exert pressure on our margins. Importantly, these challenges are not unique to only ENCO, but are reflective of the broader industry. However, I'm pleased to share a silver lining amongst these challenges. Product prices appear to have stabilized, reaching a near-term bottom by the end of Q2. This stabilization should provide some relief and contribute a better industry sentiment. Till now, majority of the buyers across the world were deferring their purchases due to one-way fall in the prices of, of all agrochemicals and raw materials. Hence, stability in prices is crucial as far as sentiment is concerned. Further, our new procurement of raw material is also happening at competitive rates, and still we are expecting some volatility in margins to persist for the rest of the financial year. One area where we have seen encouraging results is in the performance of our domestic brand branded sales. Despite the unpredictability of the monsoon and brief but severe dry spell in August, the Kharif season has fared reasonably well, with our brand sale demonstrating resilience and some growth as well. Moreover, our expansion into new markets such as Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh is also progressing as planned and further diversifying our market presence. On the product portfolio front, we are excited to announce advancement in our technical products. We anticipate commercialization of new insecticide in Q3, followed by a herbicide in Q4, which with, while these products will see initial commercialization at small scale production this year, the dynamics of the industry scenario makes it challenging to predict their scale up. Simultaneously, we will commence production registration efforts of these molecules in the export market as well. Looking ahead, we are cautiously optimistic about a more favorable export demand environment by the end of the current financial year. This optimism is fueled by anticipation that existing investors' inventories will be absorbed, as well as transition into new upcoming season in the export as well as domestic market. Furthermore, our brand sales are expected to certain their robust performance into the upcoming Ravi season. In conclusion, while the challenges persist, our strategic initiative resilience performance in key markets and forthcoming commercialization of new molecule positions as well for the future. I would now like to open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking your question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star in one to ask a question. First question is from the line of Anuj Mehra, individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Anuj. 
perfect perfect sir uh, so i have more than a couple of questions actually uh, to start with is there any update on bifenthrin and triclopyr uh, registration in the brazil market and uh, also any other markets where registration for these products is uh, currently pending any and if uh, you would like to then first get a response to this and then go to the next one uh i can't hear you sir sorry uh, your voice is a little low no. okay no what i was thinking and like asking is whether you would like to finish your question and then ask for answer or you want one by one no 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 so uh, those, those you know uh, i think i'll i'll tell you in brief bifenthrin and triclopyr both registrations are still pending uh, we have submitted all the required data and uh, one of them at least triclopyr we expect to receive by march this year bifenthrin we still don't have the date as yet okay and uh, that is only for the brazil market right yes okay and we have not applied for registration uh, no we have other other markets. other markets like australia us we already have registrations for both these products the okay. only major so market missing registration was brazil understood yes to fair enough uh so sir uh, this quarter uh, i believe we've seemed to managed uh, you know a good uh, decent top line given the lower realizations so is there an element of higher trading revenues in this quarter or is this normal business mix no um, actually this is not because of trading and this is also not normal business uh, if you uh, you know go back to your quarter 1 what the decision we had made was that whatever inventory we had we were carrying very high inventory of raw material and finished product at, in q1 so and we we decided uh, to uh, start uh, liquidating the stock and uh, start uh, uh, with buying purchase of new raw material at new prices now this liquidation process has uh, also percolated in q2 uh mainly july and part of august where uh, we basically uh, sold whatever we all the raw from uh, finished products we had in our hand and uh, that is why you see margins are under pressure in q2 as well understood so sir can we uh, can we assume that the run rate the sales run rate that we have looked at in h1 will continue in h2 so like can we look at a 250 crore top line oh um, that is what the plan is now uh, again to maintain this uh, run rate in h2 will be challenging because the uh, international market demand is still very weak uh, and so we are trying to uh, put more concentration on our brand sale business which has shown resilience and it has the one business which has uh, shown uh, um, increased uh, sales over the last year and uh, so we we are going to concentrate on brand sale business some of the trading business also we are trying to revive and uh, there are uh, q4 we will have some uh, uh, top line from the new manufacturing which new molecule manufacturing which we will start from december so with all this keeping in mind we will try our best to keep the same run rate but it's very difficult to predict how q4 is going to pan out understood understood uh also sir uh, could you could you uh, i'm just going back to uh, triclopyr and bifenthrin if you could you know throw some color on the pricing trend uh, i mean you know what was the peak pricing and how far off are we currently from the peak prices i'm just trying to understand if you know uh, the pricing has bottomed out now um, see i'll tell you pre covid the say for example triclopyr price was around 8 dollars 7 and 1/2 8 dollars uh during covid time uh, it went up and because of uh, various reasons shortages of raw material um, logistics challenges uh, the costs went up 
raw material prices went up and the price of triclopyr went up as high as 13 dollars uh, at the moment it is down to about six and a half seven dollars again and we believe this is the bottom price for triclopyr and uh, from now on once the demand comes back uh, we will see increase in prices understood understood but uh, uh, according to you it might take a quarter or two or you might it it it, it, it might take a quarter or two it might take a quarter or two yeah, yeah. fair enough fair enough uh, also sir uh, you as you mentioned earlier in your opening remarks that you know there are certain new products that we're trying to commercialize so insecticides in q3 and then herbicides in q4 I wanted to kind of understand the competitive scenario. So, how many active Indian companies are currently manufacturing these products, and can we can we you know expect gross margins of you know around 40%? Uh, and these products will they find application uh, in the domestic or the export markets? So, so know, both these products uh, are. Uh, uh, a new products which we are going to start manufacturing for which we already have the manufacturing license we have uh, uh, already uh, lined up that and uh, um, as of now I do not know any other Indian manufacturer manufacturing both of these molecules predominantly both are uh, one of them is imported from China and uh, Another one is uh, just became off patent, so I don't think uh, any both are niche products. Though these are not like big, large blockbuster products which you will hear from all the manufacturers uh, planning. Understood. Understood. So we we can then expect uh, you know decent uh, gross margins there around 35 yes, 40 percent. Yes. Yeah, it's about 30 35 percent. Okay, and uh, these will be majorly sold in the domestic markets? Both of Initially in domestic market because we don't have the uh, registrations out of India as yet. We have already initiated that process. Um, okay. But it will take at least um, one or two years till we get, uh, at least, even in uh, we get into some markets, export markets. Till then okay. we will uh, be restricted to India. Okay, and uh, what kind of uh, top line contribution can we expect from these? No, in the next very in this scenario, it is very difficult to you know uh, give a number to that. I think uh, we will have better you know visibility of uh, numbers in Q4 once we already have put in the first uh, lots in market and see how the uh, market reacts, how the uh, rubby season goes. I think Q4 we will have better numbers on uh, visibility. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. So one one last question uh, on Capex. So the new products that we're planning to launch uh, will they be manufactured in the existing plant or will be setting up a new manufacturing? No, both line? both these both these products we are manufacturing in the same plant. We are not doing any significant Capex to manufacture both these molecules. Um, the uh, major capex we will we have planned will be for next year, where next year uh, next financial year we will be setting up a new manufacturing plant for another molecule, and a new formulation plant for enhancing our manufacturing capability for branded cell products. Okay, and uh, what what size of capex are we looking at? So one year number. I think the formulation plant will be about 15 crore. And uh, the new active ingredient manufacturing plant is about 20 crore expected. Total about okay. 35 crore. And uh, that will be debt funded or uh, through internal approvals? It is being planned as of now. Uh, we will uh, we are making plans uh, to put priority on uh, different. Uh, both both these are two separate projects. So we have procurement of land and everything is being is being done. So I think in our next uh, on call we will have much better numbers on and clarity on this. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So yeah. uh, that is all from my end, sir. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank and, you, Anush. Uh, wish you a very happy Diwali. Thank you, thank you, thanks. Thank, thank you. you.
Next question is from the line of Sanjay Radha from Bastion Research. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Is my voice audible? Yeah, you are. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, 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 congratulations on a good set of numbers, sir. So, just to, you know, ask you the before participants. So, you said that the CAPEX plan is 35 odd crore. Uh, mm -hmm. So, can I... Uh, can I also, if you can share that uh, at the peak utilization, what would be the asset turn or revenue we can expect from the plant or uh, if, if it is quarter? Yeah. Yeah. Right now we are working out all these numbers. I think in next quarter we will have much better uh, clarity on this capex which we are taking next year. And uh, so I think in our next con call we will have much more details to share about this. Okay. Okay. Uh, so my next, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you have, uh, talk a little bit about more on renewed focus on brand business. So, you know, to my understanding, this was not a focus area till FI23, right? Yes. But ultimately, we seem to adding new markets and team, etc., et in this segment. So yes. can you give some color on this and, is it on banking on short-term trend or something uh, sustainably happening in this business? No, I think uh, from last two quarters we have uh, uh, we have uh, you know noticed that the uh, international uh, markets have uh, weakened and uh, the demand is. Uh, slowing down in international market and because of various reasons you know mm -hmm. accumulation of stocks at manufacturers level at traders level at all the levels uh, uh, we the mark the area in which we were concentrating most uh, is the export sale business um, really suffered so and uh, we then at that time realized uh, that brand sale business also was the only business doing well during this difficult period of time. So we have changed our focus and started looking more uh, from, not immediately from this quarter, but from last couple of quarters, we have started planning to how to increase our brand sale business in India. And uh, we have taken a lot of steps to do that. Uh, so, uh you, so, uh, given a point, uh, and, uh, this brand sale would be, can we expect, you know, how much percentage of our revenue going forward and what is the margin trend in this business uh, we can expect or if you can talk more about on, you know, two, three years down the line, how this business can really uh, scale it up further? We are now... Uh putting up a plan uh, where we want to uh, double our business in next two years, brand sale business, and uh, take it to almost 50% uh, of our total revenue in next five years coming from brand sale. And for that, there are several things we need to do, and uh, we have already initiated a lot of work on uh, um, increasing uh, product portfolio, bringing in new molecules, adding areas and presence, our presence in India, marketing network. Uh, so all that is being done. Uh, additional formulation, manufacturing capacity, all that we are planning. So we have first target of two years to double the sales of brand sale products and then next target in five years to become 50% of the top line. All right. So, sir, what kind of upfront investments are we deploying for this market? Um, CAPEX-wise, we are going to invest in a new formulation manufacturing facility, which will, uh, which initial costing, initial, uh, our target is about 15 crore rupees we are going to spend. And uh, other, other investment as far as uh, network is concerned is already going on. So, uh, okay, sir. Uh, great. Uh, so, sir, can you give some more color on export markets, especially our, our major ones? Because at least in smaller Latin America markets or African markets, we are he hearing about forex, uh, forex availability issue and etc. There are like Argentina, 
some of the uh, even african countries have forex uh, availability issues so those are also uh, some of the issues which are adding to this lack of demand uh, but as far as uh, the whole you know major markets you know us or north america south america australia southeast asia uh, the demand has uh, started uh, you know uh, coming it is uh, not as bad as uh, as it was looking in uh, july august september uh, but there will be some revival uh, we are seeing but at the same time we are also aware that there is a very high amount of inventory with chinese manufacturers indian manufacturers importers from all over these countries so um, difficult to make a judgment uh, whether the uh, scenario will change in next one month two month or three month okay so uh, another one or two quarters we are I looking think, the same yeah, yeah yeah uh, at least uh, it'll be uh, fair to say at least two quarters we will see uh, you know uh, slow uh, business and sir any color or, or uh, on demand projection or expected outlook for upcoming season in export market like brazil so are they are they are we predicting a comeback or is uh, situation still unclear matlab the same the situation is uh, you know it it again it it is different little molecule to molecule but uh, and if you but if you look at the overall situation in brazil it is uh it is reviving but it's not that bad but the margins are still very bad because uh, material uh, the same volume of material even if i ship this year my top line will be about 30 to 40% lower than last year because of erosion in price okay so sir uh, just to uh, ask you a question on that like, like which markets are we expecting a demand revival or demand is coming back and which markets are uh, you know struggling and you already said that it will take another two quarters or more on that side so if you can throw some light on that and you know how what's the demand scenario which markets are doing good and how are we placed on that markets i think uh, the it is the situation is the same all over the world but the severity of uh situation changes uh, from uh, north america to south america to australia southeast asia the uh, amount of uh, stock which which was overbought range is different like north america is uh, most of the customers have the whole years of stock so the revival will take some more time australia is little less so the revival will be faster so there are different depends on which area we are concentrating on so uh, my uh, like europe to, europe europe doesn't have a significant problem the demand is still strong from europe okay so so my reason to ask you the question is uh, since we are growing the top line the growth in top line is very strong while we uh, reflect the prices differential in in our cost side so just wanted to know which markets are you know or which geographies we are uh, doing better on that side we are now we are going to concentrate on the same geographies we are were, we were working on because we have invested significant amount of money in getting registrations there so uh, the geography is not going to change uh, but uh, it depends uh, on how the market revives okay thanks a lot sir for you know patiently answering my uh, questions thank you sanjay thank uh, you. yeah happy diwali and happy new happy year. diwali yeah. happy diwali to you thank you thank you next question is from the line of pankaj parap from molecule ventures please go ahead hello am i audible yeah vantaj you are audible yeah thank you for the opportunity so my first question is on the margin side you mentioned the margins will continue to remain uh, volatile is this because of our uh, high cost of inventories on our book or the supply side situation is very competitive that is so the, i think supply side situation is very competitive uh, our uh, raw materials now current raw materials are at uh, current market prices uh, 
but uh, there is so much stock available with all the manufacturers uh, it is very difficult to maintain uh, those uh, margins which we are in maintaining in normal business circumstances so that is the reason uh, the margins i i still predict at least another next one quarter or two quarter margins will be under pressure okay sir got it uh, and secondly if i my understanding is correct our molecule trioclopine and bracin theme as a product the china don't have uh, much manufacturing capacity for these two products so the i wanted to just understand the source of competition for the these two products is this domestic players and i mean what kind of competitive in, intensity these two products have no i think for, for both these products there are manufacturers in china uh, and uh, Uh, pre covid uh, i would say that triclopyr there were hardly any manufacturers but during covid time uh, a very large uh, significant investment uh, has been made in china for manufacturing both these molecules and uh, we are facing lot of competition from china for these molecules apart from that india in india we also have uh, one manufacturer Uh, for triclopyr and uh, at least three more manufacturers for uh, pyfenthrin uh, competing with us and uh, so there is enough competition for both these molecules okay so uh, from china there is enough competition yes as, yes as compared to indian players okay yes, got it yes 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 and so lastly uh, can you give give us some color on the upcoming rabi season and how is demand uh, situation expect to be Well, the this season is looking very strong um, um we are uh, very strong in west bengal and uh, the forecast figures which we have received from our marketing team is very robust so we hope that uh, we are going to see a very good stable rabi season okay sir okay sir that's it from my side thank you for that thank you thank you pandit thank you thank you, thank you. Next question is from line of Rajesh Shain from NB Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, Rajesh. Uh, yeah, uh, sir. My first question is: uh, Are we still carrying uh, high price inventory of raw materials, or we are done with that? No, we are done with high price inventory of raw material. But you know, since the prices of raw materials are still consistently falling, they have now almost bottomed out in October, November. but uh, i would say 80% of our inventory is at the new price and then we still have some old inventory at little higher prices but no significant uh, higher price old inventory of higher price we so, so it will not significantly it. affect our uh, p and but yes. uh, the profitability yes. right yes. okay yes. sir uh, you had mentioned in one of the calls that you know we are the lowest cost manufacturer for triclopyr Correct. So how where, where do we stand with respect to our other three main grades like chloropyrifos bifenthrin and dimethyldexin sir um chloropyrifos also we are amongst one of the best cost manufacturing companies uh, since we are the uh, first company to start chloropyrifos manufacturing in india correct uh, and uh, for as far as bifenthrin is concerned i guess uh, most of the manufacturers are at par in india because uh, still both the raw material key raw materials are imported from china oh. um, there are a uh, couple of new manufacturing plants coming up to manufacture these raw materials in india wow. once we have them we will have a better cost position than china okay okay and how about that uh, you know sir trimethyldoxin sorry thymethoxam uh, where do we do we make that product triclopyr no thymethoxam we used to manufacture it, but at the moment we are not manufacturing we are not manufacturing. but triclopyr yes we have the best cost position uh, uh, and at the moment uh, for information india is cheaper than china in triclopyr manufacturing cost but why did we stop sir thymethoxam uh, no them to is there two different products right now what i told you was triclopyr oh triclopyr okay okay, okay. yeah and now thymethoxam i thought you asked me thymethoxam it's an insecticide which we 
were manufacturing earlier, but we stopped manufacturing thiamethoxone because one of the key intermediate was coming from China, and uh, that was not our focus product. So uh, we switched uh, our manufacturing. Okay, so this product, what is what I had asked was thiamethoxinil, but what you said was which one? No, I I thought you asked thiamethoxone, but thiamethoxinil. No, I'm not aware. Were we it. making that product? No, I don't know from where I got that product name. Sorry, so sorry. Your investor I, presentation or yeah, annual yeah. report. No. So I think maybe my, you know maybe spelling maybe mistake also. Same name wrong. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So regarding the same one, uh, the UPL. Uh, I don't know. You know, last year was also not good. So how how it is going this year till now, and how it is going to be in the H2? This year till now it is that. Uh, it's a tough situation for everyone uh, it is uh, the intensity changes from company come to company uh, okay. because of the product mix the geography they are present in uh, and uh, various things so um, but going forward i think uh, things will uh, start uh, changing for the better because most of the molecule we have seen bottom prices uh prices uh, you know which are some of the products the prices are almost like 70% lower than what it used to be now right. and uh, so there is only now the only way it can go is up but the question is how much time it will take to Correct. make that happen because that depends on the inventory levels and which are still very high correct so so that means uh, h1 till now we haven't supplied anything to upl no no we have supplied we have supplied uh, significant quantities to upl in h1 ah. um, h2 numbers are not yet clear okay uh, matlab is it possible to share how much it is in h1 sir at least in h1 we have uh, already supplied about 1200 metric tons which was almost uh, 80% of last year's volume okay fi 23 volume yeah yeah, yeah. sir uh, you know in fi23 we had again a tougher situation for chloropyrifos in brazil market and yes. regarding bifenthrin also there was a change of ownership of one of the large customers so we had not done well in fi23 and we were expecting to do well in 24 but 24 has taken hard yeah. um so, still the stock levels with the customers are very high, high. Okay. Uh, so, so normally so my they... question was uh, so my question was uh, uh, let's say chloropyrifos from brazil we were expecting around 100 crores and this one by century i think 50 crores or so i know 24 is ruled out but does it look like it will happen in 25 at least yeah, I'm, i'm very confident once the the demand becomes normal we will uh, start uh, we'll achieve those numbers again Very uh, maybe FI 25. We have, uh, in fact, uh, for as far as chloropyrifos is concerned, we have uh, had uh, a significant increase in volume this year uh, over the last year volume. In Brazil, but again, in Brazil, but again, okay. uh, you know, the the price has is almost lower by 40 percent. So uh, the top line doesn't reflect that. And, True. Uh, but going forward, we'll definitely see much improvement. Okay. and uh, recently we uh, uh, have uh, uh, the us uh, one of the uh, high courts of us turning down the judgment of us epa which had uh, banned chlorpyrifos in us and okay. the judgment was overturned recently and uh, okay. us has now uh, um, allowed chlorpyrifos for sale which is a very significant uh, uh, achievement for chlorpyrifos as a molecule Okay. Uh, and it will uh, uh, give a longer life to the molecule in rest of the world all market also so but uh, do we have registrations uh, already approved and all in us market yes for chlorpyrifos we have uh, no not in us but the our bigger focus is in brazil and uh, uh, the other southeast asian countries who had slowed down purchase of chlorpyrifos because of the fact that us had banned chlorpyrifos and now the this is since the decision is reversed we will see a resurgence in demand coming from all over the other markets also okay 
Okay, so you are saying the the repercussions so you will have a positive, you know, with the other customers of the yes. uh, country. Yes. Okay, yes. Fair enough, sir. Sir, I know the situation is not that good to have any discussion regarding cramps or anything. But uh, is there any progress uh, for cramps arrangement uh, with UPL for any other molecule or two, with any other customer? Molecule, yeah, there are two molecules which are already ready. Uh, which we have already done the R and D work. Everything is done ready, but since this market scenario is so, you know, bad, uh, we are not yet discussing when to start and everything. So we'll just wait for at least one more quarter and then take up those projects. So these are the same one which you are launching in Q3 and Q4. No, no, no. these are different two different molecules. Two different molecules. Okay, great. Yeah. Sir, uh, now uh, regarding the capex, which you said that you would be uh, doing it in the next financial year, uh, yeah. so just can you give us an idea? Ki are you increasing the capacity of any of these existing product in this capex, or it is altogether? We, we are increasing our formulation capacity. Uh, okay. Because uh, the, our current formulation capacity. Uh, will cater to our uh, increased demand, but we have a plan to increase our volumes in brand sale business significantly. And for okay. that, we will need new manufacturing facilities. So for that, we are in going to invest. Okay. And uh, for the second project, we are going to invest in a new technical manufacturing plan for a new product. Okay. Uh, so the new product, it is not the same to that you are... Uh, Doing some no no no, uh, no, no, no. In, in that's that's a different future, product. That's that's the yeah completely different new herbicide, which has uh, just come off patent this year. Oh oh okay herbicide okay yeah. so that means uh, now as and today what is the capacities we have for bifenthrin and uh, chloropyrifos and our plant? Bifenthrin we have about 300 metric tons per annum capacity. Triclopyr we have 5000 metric tons per annum capacity. Chlorpyrifos, we have 3,000 metric ton per annum capacity. And uh, so, so this, we are not going to increase any of this capacity? No, I think we have enough capacity for all the three molecules as of now. Okay. Now, with the formulation capacity, uh, with the existing one, how much sales you can do and how much you are increasing in the next year? See, with branded cell formulation, we, uh, we uh, right now, we have... very sure but uh, we have about seven percent increase over last year and now uh, we are targeting hundred uh, percent in next two years so and we are adding two we have already added two states we are adding two more states in q4 and a okay. uh, uh, lot of uh, uh, hiring we are doing for marketing network in the new states and uh, for next year also there are a lot of plans to add new products Okay. No, sir. My question was formulations uh, yeah. based on what uh, you know. How much with the current capacity? How much revenue we can generate? And yeah. uh, you know, when you are adding new capacity next financial year, current how much capacity we can go up to about 100 crore sales of our branded sale products. And okay. uh, with the new capacity, we are going to at least double the uh, capacity. The new manufacturing, okay. we'll add another and, 100 crore. Okay, and these uh, capacities, you don't require much uh, capex because these are only, you know, packaging and uh, those type yeah. of investment you yeah. need, right? It's not a big and investment. Big investment. So, but currently, how much capacity utilization you're doing right now? We are almost at about 70% capacity utilization now. Okay, very good. Okay, okay. Yeah. Fine enough, sir. Sir, now, uh, another confusion is the... You know, regarding the new molecules that uh, you are uh, launching. Now, we had two molecules that were pending for registration in Brazil market. Yes. Right? So, that you said it is getting delayed. And other than that, I think already you had mentioned for two molecules or so, you are at different stages of data connection. Mm. Correct? So, now you have come up with two more new products where one you are launching next quarter, the other one is on the Q4. These are for domestic market. I know, I, I know, domestic market. So what I'm, and you are now saying you are launching one more technical manufacturing, you know, the CapEx, you are doing that. 
So my question is 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1. So that means 7. These are all different molecules? Yeah, all different molecules. All of these are different molecules. All, all are different molecules. Now, the, the molecules on which we have already, you know, the two molecules on which we are at different stages of data generation and registration. So one of them uh, needs a very large manufacturing capacity, cap, uh, uh, manufacturing facility because it's a complicated process of 14 steps. So we are okay. going to invest in a plant for that. So that is the one we are going for the next year. Yes, yes, yes. Sir, this data collection, is it completed for those two molecules or it is still undergoing? Still going on. Still going. So on. when can we apply for the registration, sir? Very, we are very close to doing that. We are very close to doing that. Okay. Sir, uh, the registration for this Brazil mole you know, market, the two molecules, uh, I think it was supposed to come in last year, the March, I mean this year March, now you are saying March 24. Uh, I know you can't give us the timeline, but uh, is it any confirmed key we'll get at least one by March 24? So what the judgment we are making is like this, that at least one of the largest molecules, uh, which is cyclopase, mm. uh, we already had phase one, phase one evaluation on the molecule. Okay. by the registration authority, they asked for additional data in which we have already submitted the data. So okay. going by the normal consultant's advice, uh, it takes about six months once you submit the fresh data. So okay. we expect that, you know, we'll get it by March then. So that is which product, sir, March? Triclopase. Triclopase. And what is the other one which you are, uh, you know, seeing Bifentrin. next year? By Bifentrin, okay. yeah, will be for next year. Fair enough. So, but as and when you get the registration, let's say in March 24, can we start the sales for the next season immediately? Uh, no, after that, it takes about at least six more months for uh, us to get added as a source in various customers' registrations. Oh, okay. Sir, yeah. uh, I know the, the, the margins, the EBITDA. Okay, okay. Sir, the EBITDA margins are different for the different verticals and also the products. But if you can give an, an average for the company, what is the EBITDA margins for, let's say, technicals, formulation, and uh, the B2B, B2, the business with UPLS, something, whatever you could share? It's, see, normally EBITDA margins for technicals are higher. Um, okay. Branded sales formulations are also higher. And uh, for trading businesses, uh, low, low uh, EBITDA margins. Okay. But, you know, you know, as you know, as I had already mentioned in in this situation at the moment, to predict any firm percentage of EBITDA margin is very difficult. I know, we, I know. I you know, have to do our best to you know, uh, you know, stay afloat and you know get the best of the market and customers we have. Okay. No, sir, but what we were told is that, uh, like, in formulations, uh, initially the margins will not be good because you will be investing more on, you know, expanding your, uh, you know, uh, distribution and the sales and all that. And as your sales picks up, the, you know, uh, the margins keep going in a higher way. So now you said this year your sales in the formulation segment has been very good. And the, now you have charted out very aggressive plan. So what I was saying is, is our existing formulation margins the same as technicals or it is still lower than that? No, it is now uh, still lower than that. Uh, okay. And because we our concentration was not on for me brand sale business. So we did not have enough number of new molecules in our basket. Okay. And uh, so we worked on it from last two quarters. We have been working on it, how to uh, you know achieve that. And we have uh, added uh, at least six new molecules in our brands. And okay. uh, that has shown very good market response. And then we are adding few more in next rugby season also. So okay. with all this work, uh, we already had the network. We uh, had the network in major markets in India. So our uh, investment uh, is already done. Now, okay. now we are investing in new markets and for the additional growth which we are uh, expecting. Okay, okay. And for all these new products, you would be outsourcing the product, right? 
Uh, it depends. Some of the molecules uh, which we are already manufacturing, so those are those brands are also added in that. But you can say in general we will be sourcing the technicals. Actives. Uh, you will be sourcing. Uh, till maybe once it reaches some substantial volume, maybe you may plan to manufacture correct. it. Correct. Correct. Sir, uh, now let us assume that if you can double the sales in two years, uh, at that juncture, the, your margins would be uh, in the formulation would be better than the technicals? Uh, much better, yes. So that time, not only the products, you know, technical products are giving you better margin, even the, the sales in formulation also can fetch you it higher much margin. much better than what they are right now. Ah. And But again, you can't compare it with technical because in in, the, in technical, which, which is like the active ingredient, it again depends on the product. Now, there are uh, certain technicals which sell in large volumes like chlorpyrifos. The mm. margins are not very good. But certain products, which are niche products, small volumes, the margins are much better. Okay, okay, like that. So again, it varies from product to product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, wish you all and uh, the you know the entire team uh, wish you happy Deepavali and uh, happy good day, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Abhishek Singh from Deloitte. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening, sir. Uh, can hi. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Abhishek. Yeah, uh, sir, just uh, just a very simple question. I started, uh, I recently started understanding a company and would like to understand when was the last time we had such a down cycle and how long did it stay for and, you know, like what are the measures we have taken the last time uh, when this happened? I think 2010, I, I can go back to remember that such similar kind of situation happened uh, during mm -hmm. that time. And uh, but it uh, it did not take this long to uh, the situation to go back to normal. It was I think at max two quarters. Uh, but uh, this uh, time, uh, because of various reasons, uh, the uh, situation is still the same and uh, the demand is still weak. Uh, from almost now, this is the third quarter. And we are still uh, not very sure how it's going to pan out in next two quarters. Got it. And uh, so the second part of the question was, uh, last time when it happened in, in 2010, did you take any special measures uh, which helped us sail through the whole patch or we just let the market do its thing and uh, basically we uh, we waited? No, so we, we did both. We waited also and then we started investing more in new product registrations all over mm -hmm. the world in different geographies which we were not present at that time. So mm -hmm. we wanted to spread ourselves in different geographies uh, so that you know we can get seeded with uh, such kind of situation. But now what happens is this kind of situation, it affects all the geographies. Uh, because of uh, simply because of material stock available across the board, across the all the manufacturers all over the world, who have uh, over capacity in manufacturing uh, higher volumes of uh, finished product from material stock levels. Got it. And uh, sir, the second question is: I think you already gave us a figure of 35 crores, which. Which is the capex we are planning out. So, so, uh, so, can we see the execution happening in the next two years, or the number which you gave is something what we are planning just for the next financial year? No, it will take two years. We will initiate the project next year, next financial year. But uh, for completion, it will take two years. Got it. And sir, just the last question. Um, by any chance, do we have the ratio handy? So basically, uh, what I'm trying to understand is uh, what is the marketing as well as the R&D spend compared to the revenue operations what we have uh, what we have uh, what we have generated for the quarter or maybe for the year for the year i have R&D um, for last year 1.5% mm -hmm. but this year i don't have the number as yet and what about the marketing spend sir i don't have the number on marketing uh, at the moment but uh, if okay. you send me an email or uh, we can, you know, share the data. 
Sure thing, sure thing. I'll do that. Uh, thank you so much and um, happy Diwali to your whole team, sir. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you. Happy Diwali. Thank you. Participants, you may press star in one to ask the question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star in one to ask the question. As there are no further questions, I will now hand the conference to the management for closing comments. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for attending the conference call, and uh, I uh, wish you all a very happy Diwali and a prosperous New Year. And uh, from AIMCO's team, uh, we are working very hard to uh, achieve our goals, and we seek your support in uh, future also. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Amico Pesticides, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect the lines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.